Now it's time for exercise four. Learning walking bass lines is a key skill that every bass player should try and get under their belt because there is simply no better way to learn the fretboard and learn how to outline harmony on the fretboard than learning how to play walking bass lines. And that is why every single great bass player that you know of will have studied walking bass lines. James Jameson, Jaco Pastorius, Joe Dart, Marcus Miller, Victor Wooten, Anthony Jackson, Carol Kay, they all studied jazz and walking bass lines, even if that's not the style of music that they are actually associated with. But before you start to learn how to play walking bass lines, there is a critical skill you must learn that most bass players actually miss out on. And without it, learning walking bass lines is going to be way, way harder. So in this lesson, I'm going to reveal exactly what it is and give you four specific exercises to help you master it. Now with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so the number one thing that so many bass players actually skip over when they're coming to learn walking bass lines is learning the two feel. The two feel means that we, bass players, we are playing two notes per bar. Two notes per bar. I'm gonna give you four specific exercises to help you get this two feel underneath your hands. Now the first one, the first, I've got my trusty pen here. The first one, exercise one, is the simplest as you'd probably have guessed, right? All we need to do for the first one is play root and five. Root and five, okay? So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna play in this first bar here, we're gonna play the root and fifth, the root and fifth, root and fifth, root and fifth, okay? Of each of these chords. So for the C minor, it's gonna sound like root and five. For the F7, it's gonna sound like root and five. For the B flat, it's gonna be root and five for the E flat, root and five. Now heads up, this is an A minor seven half diminished or also known as an A minor seven flat five. Okay, A minor seven flat five. That means this, that note is wrong. We need to make that a flat five. Now everybody's probably thinking, oh yes, yeah, I've got it, trust me. The amount of students I've sat with in person when I was teaching one-to-one -one, and I give them this sequence and I'd be like, we're just gonna play two notes a bar and every time they hit this bar, they will play a natural five. Oh, honestly, it killed me. Play a flat five on that chord, okay? So it's root five for the D7, root five, and then the G minor over there, root five, and then root. Five. Now it's really important that we remember that shape as well. If you've noticed the shape here, other than that A minus seven flat five here, the shape is always the same. Okay, it's always the same. So we've got that root and five, but we've, we've also got the root and five below. We've got the root five. On the F, we've got the root five. B flat, we've got the root five. E flat, we've got the root five. On the A, we've got the root flat five. On the D, root five. And then the G, we've got the root five, or the root and the five, okay? So, here we go. below. Super simple, right? And for the most part, I'm doing that all below the fifth fret, for the most part. Now, I would challenge you if you can do this already, can you do it over the entire fretboard? Root, five, root, five, root. Five, root, five, root, five, root, five, root, five, root, five, root. Okay, 
Uh, can you do it up and down the fretboard? It is either a yes or a no. You either can or you can't. If you can't, then focus on that and make sure that you can practice it over the entire fretboard. Now, exercise two, not three, exercise two is real similar, okay? Exercise two, we're just gonna play roots and thirds, okay? The root and third of each chord. Now this is a little more complex because we've got a mix of major and minor chords, okay? So if it's a major, if it's a major third, you can either play this shape, which is, you know, playing the root and then down a string and then back a fret. That's how you find that shape of the major third. If it was a minor third, it would be play the root across a string and then two frets back. That would give us B minor, B flat minor. So major, minor. So major would be, okay. And then the minor would be. Okay. Now, you need to go through this, these eight bars, and you need to be able to play root and three over each of the bars. It might be hard for you, but just stick with it, okay? So we're gonna go root three, root three, root three, root three, twice around the sequence. Let's do it. Here we go. How awesome does that sound, right? It sounds beautiful. And the reason being is we're playing these big fat root notes and then we're playing the thirds, which indicate to the audience and the rest of the band whether that chord is major or minor. Now, next, we're gonna move on to exercise three, where we're gonna put a little bit of a twist on it. But before we even get into exercise three, if you want to check it out, I've actually got a 15 week program that's open for enrollment right now. It's called the Jazz Accelerator, the SBL Jazz Accelerator. It's basically, you can come and study with me for 15 weeks where we take three jazz standards and basically do a deep dive on each of them. It's a real, real cool course. It's only opening once a year for enrollment. So if it sounds like something you might wanna check out, wait until the end of the lesson, go check it out. Now, moving on, exercise three. Now, exercise three is going to basically combine both of these exercises, okay, and again, um, this is going to push you uh, from a you know from a, a mental standpoint, from a cognitive standpoint when you're playing. Okay, we're going to play root three on the first bar and then root five. Okay, and then we're just going to repeat that formula: root three, root five, root three, root five. Let's hear it with the backing track. Here we go, starting with root three. Now it's time for exercise four, where we're going to take this and we're gonna develop it one step further, okay? So first of all, we're gonna start off with root five, okay? So root five, where are we? Root five, okay? But the next part of the formula is actually gonna be reversed. So we're gonna go three root, okay? Root five, three root on each chord. So let's look at these first four bars here. We're gonna play root, Five, three, root, root, five, three, root, root, five, three, root, root, five, three, root. That was actually the first eight bars, okay? So let's hear an example of that in action. Here we go.
most of you will be able to nail that down if you're doing this sort of like 10, 15 minutes a day in the next four to maximum eight weeks. And that's going to give you a real clear goal to aim towards, okay? We've got very specific goals here. So with that said, make sure that you grab the download from down below. It has all of the tab and the notation and the backing track so you can try this out for yourself. Hopefully you will do that. Um, I did mention my Jazz Accelerator 15 week program that's open for enrollment right now. If you dig this and you wanna go real deep for the next 15 weeks with me, it's gonna be a blast. I think it's probably one of the best programs I've ever created in my life, but we're only opening enrollment once per year. Okay, so if you want to go check it out. With that said, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.